A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God in his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. Verbum Domini. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, 
when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. Verbum Domini. Dominus vobiscum. Et spiritu Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria tibi et nomine. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to the town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. 
the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Urbum Domini. The Assumption of our Blessed Mother is a huge leap that brings her body and soul from earth into heaven. To understand this huge leap, we should first consider a small leap. Today's Gospel mentions twice, a small leap, a small jump. It says that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, she felt the infant leap in her womb. It's an experience that expectant mothers sometimes have, that they feel their unborn children, unborn child, move in the womb before it has seen the day of light. That, however, is not what the Gospel wants to say. Because at the second mention, it says clearly, At the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. The Gospel speaks of a small leap for joy. Why would it speak of joy in the case of an unborn child. And how could Elizabeth know that the unborn John the Baptist was aware and what he was thinking of? To understand this small leap in the Gospel, we have to take into account what was mentioned in the first reading. Just before the great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Just before this sign, the book of Revelations says, God's temple in heaven was opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen in the temple. The Ark of the Covenant. That was perhaps the most precious artifact in all of ancient Israel. Not because it was made of gold and precious materials, but it contained the very stones that God had written on when he made the covenant with Moses. He had said, I shall be your God and you shall be my people. And the statutes of this covenant are the Ten Commandments given by God to Moses. They were kept in the Ark of the Covenant. They were so precious to God's people because they expressed and almost guaranteed God's presence among them. However, the people were not always so respectful towards God, and they forgot about his presence among them. In the time of King Saul, the ark was seized as booty by the Philistine army. And it took some time, but eventually it came back. When the ark was in the Philistine camp, it brought only disaster to them, and they didn't want to have it. 
So they pushed it out. And it came to the field of a man, Arauna, who kept it with himself. And then soon everybody discovered that everything went extremely well for him. Then David came. And King David escorted the Ark of the Covenant into the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us that he offered sacrifices to be offered. And he danced and leaped for joy all the way from the field of Arauna into the city. This joy, this is what the gospel wants us to remember. This is what St. Luke wants us to realize if he speaks of the infant that leaps for joy. Because now Mary is here and Mary carries in her womb an unborn child. God had given her the most impossible question that he ever asked of anyone, to become the mother of God. Mary said, how can this be? I have no husband. I am not betrothed even. Then the angel said, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the angel also said, your relative, Elizabeth, who is barren, is now in her sixth month, because for God nothing is impossible. So Mary learned that Elizabeth was with child, and she came to her assistance, but she herself carried the Son of God. She is the Ark of the Covenant. She brings God's presence. And the unborn John the Baptist, who is the precursor for the Messiah, leaps for joy in his mother's womb because God comes present. In Jesus, God is fully present. Years later, Jesus explained to one of his disciples, whoever sees me sees the Father. So, at the meeting of these two expectant mothers, Mary and Elizabeth, there is joy because God is present. This joy that the unborn infant expresses, Mary takes it over and absorbs it, so to say, and continues it when she expresses her Magnificat, saying, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Mary speaks of joy, too. But the way she says it, we should not go over that lightly. She says, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. A Savior is someone whom you need when you are in great danger when you cannot help yourself anymore, then you need someone to save you. Apparently, there is a very great danger from which only God can save us. And that is what gives Mary the reason to rejoice. You might ask, what kind of danger is there implied when Mary says, I rejoice in God, my Savior. This grave danger is expressed today in the second reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul says, death comes, came through man. And he also says, in Adam, all shall die. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. In the face of death, mankind is helpless. And if you need an explanation of that ultimate need in which we find ourselves so helpless, then there is a graphic image of it in the first reading. It speaks of a dragon, huge and red like fire. It threatens the entire creation. 
sweeping away a third of the stars in the sky, hurling them down toward the earth. Who could stop such a monstrous beast? If that beast is let loose, we all die. This is certainly a situation of great need, in which only God can come to the rescue. And that is exactly what he is doing. And that's how the first reading concludes. It says, John the evangelist heard it in his vision, I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. Salvation in our need comes through the anointed one. Anointed one is the translation of the Hebrew Mashiach, Messiah, of Christos, the Christ. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ comes to us through Mary. She is the new Ark of the Covenant. She brings to us the presence of God. So, in Christ, we can discern towards what great destiny we, mankind, are headed. We see it in Christ, yes. But, and now comes the huge leap, we can also see it in Mary. For the first reading makes a link between the Ark of the Covenant and this great sign of the woman in the sky. The woman is clothed with the sun. Now the sun is the most beautiful creature, the most beautiful part of all creation. And therefore it means that this woman is full of grace. The moon was under her feet. The moon changes shape constantly. It's a sign of the passing of time. Having the moon under your feet means that the woman is placed above time. She's not subject to time. She is there from age to age. A crown of 12 stars was on the woman's head. 12 stars, a symbol of the apostolic church with 12 apostles. And that means that this woman accompanies the church on his, her path through history. This woman is the mother of the church. She symbolizes the Blessed, Very Mar the Blessed Virgin Mary, assumed into heaven. In her, too, we see our destiny. We see our hope. For us and for the entire church, she is an intercessor, an unfailing help, because she is with God. And therefore, she is close to all of us. In whatever situation we find her ourselves, she is close to God and therefore close to us. We can always call for her help. That is our joy. We could leap for joy today. This is our hope. That one day we may find ourselves where she has preceded us. In my country, we have a saying. It says, a child of Mary will never be lost. And today, we acknowledge that she is our mother and that we are her children, that she is our hope. As we pray, we ask for her intercession to help us on our path through life that we may always keep in our hearts what she has said, be it done to me according to your word. And may we do what the gospel says of Mary, that she kept all these words in her heart. May this gospel, may these words of God enter into our heart, where we keep them and ponder them. And may they help us to experience this joy and have confidence in her intercession. Amen.